Now you can locate all four attachment styles in this graph, which is divided into low and high anxiety and low and high emotional avoidance. Around 50% of the population are more securely attached and if you're securely attached, you find it relatively easy to get close to others. And on the one hand, you don't worry about depending on others. So you're fine with communicating also your pain and your emotions and your needs and desires instead of becoming passive aggressive. Um, but also you're fine with others depend on you. So this balance, you're also not afraid of being abandoned. You're not afraid of getting too close. Um, this proximity distance topic, that's healthily resolved. You also know your boundaries, you, you can communi communicate them, but you're not overly emotional. And that's why you're fine being independent, but you're also not overly numb. So you're fine and actually you would like to get close to others and that makes you even feel healthily well. What's interesting is that if you talk with a more securely attached person in a one-on-one -on -one setting and you go a little bit more deep, talk about their past relationships, their childhood, they can really connect to the good and the bad and also reflect on that. So they don't have this all or nothing thinking, my childhood was good or all men are like that. They don't come to those kind of conclusions. They have a more nuanced thinking and they see reality as it is. And they can also allow themselves to attach and get closer to the pain that they're feeling. They can reflect on that. They don't have those overly rationalizations. They can really feel hurt and talk about that. They can also talk about the good things. There's this healthy reflection going on. And then there's the anxious attachment style. Around 20% of the population is more anxiously attached. If you are, you worry about your partner not really loving you. You worry about that your partner won't stay with you. And this anxious attachment style can unfold in two ways. Either you become more of this pleaser, you're very needy, and you really wanna get close to your partner and that sometimes shies other people away. And that also makes you more at risk to stay in abusive relationships because you need the love so much. And you're also having a hard time with setting boundaries. You cannot really argue. You don't actually initiate conflict. You're more worried about the other person and you're overly needy though or you become more of the controller, more demanding. You don't say, hey, I need you. You more become passive aggressive. You didn't bring out the trash, you're 10 minutes late. But both being a controller or being needy is actually all about you having this anxious attachment style. Now in a relationship, your partner would probably say that you have a constant need for validation. If the partner doesn't call for a while, you worry already, um, you can be too clingy. That's why you step over boundaries and the partner doesn't like that because you're invading his, his or her space. And sometimes you even can come across impulsive and even aggressive. And if I talk to people with more of an anxious attachment style in a one-on-one -on -one setting, again, we go deep, talk about the past, childhood, past relationships, they sometimes get lost in the thread of the conversation. They sometimes forget to answer my question. They jump between time dimensions and sometimes they get flooded by a lot of emotions. And though they experience themselves as very needy, but in the conversation, they're more preoccupied with what other people think, whether other people like them. And then there's the avoidant attachment style. Around 25% of the population is more avoidant. You come across more distant, more cold. You're more rational. Um, you have a difficult time to fully trust others and to even make yourself vulnerable and to be dependent you, you're more on your own, you're more independent, and you struggle a little bit with really getting very close to people. But actually, it's also a little bit of this pseudo-independence, because actually you're a bit afraid to actually share your needs. You're afraid to actually get hurt, and maybe that's still subconscious what's going on right now, but this is sort of a protection that you keep distance because you're still under control. If you're displaying an avoidant attachment style, Sometimes you're also more of this type A person, maybe even a workaholic. You like working a lot because this relieves you from the need to really build an emotionally close relationship. In a relationship, your partner would probably say that you're not emotionally intimate enough and you don't open up enough. If I talk to people with more of an avoidant attachment style in one-on-one -on -one sessions and we go a bit more deeper, they often don't answer really my question. If I ask them about their emotions, how do you feel about that? They often talk about things, 
If we talk about relationships, they talk about things and activities that connects them, but they cannot really actually talk about their emotions because they even struggle to access those. They also display themselves as more undemanding and more modest. They don't need so much. They don't need so much love. They're fine with that. And also they often idealize the past. For example, if I ask them about their, their parents, they just say, oh no, childhood was great. Uh, maybe there was one or the other thing, but it was great. But if I ask them about actual examples, they struggle more to, to support uh, this great childhood, for example, with actual storylines. And lastly, there's a combination out of anxious and avoidant. It is the anxious avoidant attachment style. Only around 5% of the population are displaying this attachment style. On the one hand, you have this desire of intimacy and a vulnerable relationship. But on the other hand, you really don't want an intimate, vulnerable relationship. And that's a little bit of a paradox, but this is making it exactly very difficult sometimes to connect. And those people also have a high psychological risk, or at least the highest out of the other attachment styles for depression, anxiety, even borderline personality. And maybe nevertheless, you have some close friendships, but then with others, you find it a bit hard to deeply connect and you rather keep the distance. Now, in a relationship, you might enter very openly, but then over time, when there's more commitment needed, you shy away. Sometimes your behavior in a relationship is very unpredictable and you like using this push-pull behavior. You don't do this consciously, but subconsciously, you push-pull. We will talk about where this is coming from, from the childhood, but basically you're just trying to test is this partner still staying with me? But by pushing and pulling them away, you actually often break the relationship. But this is the last thing that you want because the deepest fear you have is actually not being loved and being rejected. And this is exactly how you're standing in your own way. Um, sometimes you also subconsciously use guilt or manipulation techniques to keep the partner then close, and to manipulate them in a certain way. But again, this is not because you're evil. This is just because you're hurt and this is sort of a survival strategy that you learned in your childhood and we will talk about this in a minute. And in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you don't necessarily very quickly understand that. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time, but generally you notice people sometimes blow things out of proportion, they gaslight, um, and they just sort of have a skewed perspective of reality. But in their mind it sounds very reasonable. And again, it's often sometimes very subtle. You need a while until you understand uh, what is going on. Attachment styles are not an all or nothing principle. It's a tendency and you do have all attachment styles within you, but you will probably resonate with one attachment style more than with the other. Now, let's go into your childhood and let's connect the dots. But before that, I would like to share this montage with you.